David here with Fig Boot on Pens, uh, here with an ink review. Uh, the ink I'm going to be taking a look at today is an ink from Mont Blanc's Writers Limited Edition series, uh, and that is the Mont Blanc Shakespeare Velvet Red. Uh, this ink right here was provided for review by the good folks at Anderson Pens. Uh, and if you stay tuned at the end of the review, I will let you know how you can win this very bottle of ink, courtesy of Anderson Pens. Um, it's still very full, uh, even after using a bit here for the review. So let's get to the review. And in order to do that, let's hop over here to camera two. So the ink comes in this box. Uh, you know, I spent some time with the Andersons, uh, Brian and Lisa, while at the Triangle Pen Show last week, uh, and Lisa said that she thought that this portrait of William Shakespeare looked a lot like the actor Bill Murray. So I, I do have to say there is quite a bit of resemblance uh, between uh, this rendition of Shakespeare and a young Bill Murray. Uh, inside, uh, there is a... First of all, I like the fact that the, uh, uh, the logo kind of peeks out of the top. Uh, they do have a, uh, a user's guide. I can't really think of any other ink company that includes uh, instructions with their inks. Uh, but this is kind of more of a general care guide for Mont Blanc uh, pens uh, that's in a number of languages. And then inside we have the bottle. Uh, it contains 35 milliliters of ink. Uh, you know, I actually think the box looks better than the bottle. The, that's a, a decent little picture there, but... Um, you know, the, uh, the label is just a little bit on the bland side. Uh, there is a mistake that's just a little fold in here when they applied the label. Uh, and that, uh, you know, not and there's no graphics on here as far as a picture. Uh, not that a label is that important, but I just expected a little bit more of Mont Blanc. Uh, do, I do like the shape of this bottle, though. Uh, and then the opening at the top is plenty wide to be able to fit any of your pens. So, let's set that aside. And this is what the ink looks like. Uh, Mont Blanc Shakespeare Velvet Red. Uh, it's a nice, deep, warm red. Uh, the header uh, and these passes are created with a uh, 2.8 milliliter pilot, uh, millimeter, excuse me, pilot parallel. Um, you can see here that with each, each successive pass, the shading gets slightly darker, darker but not a drastic amount here. Um, but you can see in this ink application where I, I laid down a fair amount of ink uh, and, uh, and then pulled it across with a Q-tip. So you can see the variance of shades that you can achieve with the different levels of application. Uh, in regard to comparison, uh, here is the Mont Blanc... William Shakespeare Velvet Red, uh, and that uh, the closest ink color I have to this is Diamine Red Dragon, which is fairly close to that. Uh, it's just uh, slightly lighter than Diamine or Diamine Oxblood, uh, and uh, but then it's just slightly darker than Diamine Matador. Uh, in regard to some other kind of lighter reds, uh, here's. Diamine Poppy Red. Boy, I, I, I realized when I was doing this that I have a lot of Diamine Red inks. Uh, but here are a couple that aren't Diamine, which is a, a Pilot Iroshizuku Momiji, which is a little bit on the lighter side. Uh, and then another red that I do care for is Thornton's Red, which is a little bit uh, on the lighter side as well. Uh, I am using uh, Rhodia 80 gram paper here, uh, and I experienced virtually no bleed through, uh, even with the large amount of ink that I put through here. Uh, you know, I'm not really counting these passes right here because the Pilot Parallel, I uh, don't know how you can see it here, but it does have a, a, a couple of teeth here at the end of the nib. So when you, uh, that do eat at the paper a little bit. So when you do make a couple of passes, then it kind of chews into the paper a little bit. And so that's the reasoning behind that. Nothing to do with the ink itself. It's more than the pen. Uh, you know, I'd say that it has a medium amount of shading on this Rhodia paper, but when I applied it to uh, a, a healthy amount to this Tomoe River paper, uh, that you could see here that I was able to get a fair amount of sheen in addition to the shading. You know, I, I really don't achieve, or I haven't really achieved this level of sheen in standard writing, uh, or even with the, the larger application of, of the parallel header. But, uh, but I thought that did look kind of nice. 
Uh, in regard to the pens, first, I have a Twisby Mini with a fine steel nib. So we have a Twisby Mini. And this is a fine steel nib. Then, next, I have a Visconti, which is the Visconti Desert Springs Opera. And this is a 23 karat palladium nib. And then the last pen that I have is right here. And this is the Pilot Custom Heritage Nine twelve, and this has a music nib. If you'd like to know more about music nibs, uh, I did a, a video uh, maybe about two months ago, uh, which was kind of a joint venture, but with uh, Mike from Inde uh, Ink Dependence. Uh, that we both took a look at some uh, music nibs. So if you're interested in those, then take a look at my channel and you can find it. I, I was happy with the way that video turned out. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do that with Mike. So, in regard to a writing sample, I have some quotes from one of my favorite films. So let's see if you can guess what film this is. We'll start with the Twisby. How can you be so obtuse? Then we'll move to a medium nib here with the Visconti. And it's, some birds aren't meant to be caged. And then finally, we have the pilot. And the last quote is, get busy living or get busy dying. Uh, if you haven't guessed it already that these quotes come from the 1994 film, The Shawshank Redemption, uh, besides being one of my favorite films, the reason I chose it was because the Morgan Freeman character in the film is named Red. Uh, if you're not familiar with the film, it's the story of uh, Andy Dufresne and tells the story of his time at the Shawshank Prison. Uh, it, it's one of those films that's on television a great deal, and if I'm flipping channels and I happen to uh, see that it's on, then inevitably I'll stop and watch it for uh, uh, no matter how far into the movie it is. Uh, there's just so many memorable moments in the film. It's just beautifully shot, wonderfully written, uh, and it's based on a short story by Stephen King. I just love it. Uh, you know, I do find the flow of this ink to be uh, a bit on the wet side. Now, this Rhodia paper tends to be a bit slick, so that kind of contributes to the wetness, even with the uh, fine nib that it was taking 15 seconds or in excess of that to, uh, uh, to dry. And with the medium nib, uh, it was taking more than 15 seconds as well, and, and that Visconti is a rather wet medium. So uh, your drying time may vary, and it most likely is going to be a little bit less than this. Uh, that uh, and that uh, in regard to some other things about it, I thought that while uh, slightly lighter with a fine nib, I did find that it maintains its uh, deep red uh, even while using a fine nib. Uh, then 
with a medium nib that uh, this ink really reminds me of the red velour interior in my family's 1977 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. And yes, I accidentally added an extra L to Oldsmobile uh, by accident. So uh, when, when I was a kid, we had two cars. We had the Oldsmobile and then we had a 72 Chevy Malibu, which had vinyl seats. Uh, and, you know, I, I think kids nowadays really don't know the joy of, of vinyl seats. On a really hot day, if you were wearing shorts, those vinyl seats were brutal hot. So my sister and I always, always liked it when we took the Olds because the uh, velour in interior was much softer and uh, wouldn't give you third degree burns. Uh, and then finally, that I, you know, I do find that this is a red that is kind of more business appropriate. Uh, you know, that uh, a lot of reds have a tendency to be kind of very bright and kind of clown nose red. Uh, and, and that I find that this one uh, is a nice deep red, but isn't going to garner too much, uh, uh, too much attention. Uh, so let's do a little water test here. And we'll... Put some water on here. Okay, that's a healthy amount. And while that sits for a bit, let's uh, take a look at the chromatography uh, that I uh, did here. You know, I'm still experimenting, but the best way to do these, uh, you can see here that uh, different methods actually kind of produce different results. Uh, in this one, I had the ink all the way down to the bottom. Uh, in this one, I had much more of a gap. Uh, that drop came later. And then this one, which I think turned out the best, there was just a tiny gap at the bottom. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of still playing around to see which gives the best results. But um, uh, you can see here that it, in addition to the red, uh, that there's a decent amount of kind of grayish green uh, and then even a bit of blue in there. So I don't know. I just kind of think that the chromatography is kind of cool, not just on this, but in general, how it breaks apart the color. It's interesting to see kind of what goes in to making this uh, color as a whole. So, okay, we've had that let this sit here for a little bit, so we'll go ahead and dab this off to see how the water test went. I put a lot of water on there, so this is a, a healthy water test. Uh, and, you know, while by no means would I say that this is water resistant, uh, the red kind of goes away and kind of what's left is that, uh, that grayish green that hung in here just a little bit. Um, so, there you have the uh, Mont Blanc Shakespeare Velvet Red. Um, you know, what pens would I, uh, I pair with this? Well, um, you know, I think it would look nice with a, uh, a Wall Eversharp Deco Band uh, with the different shades of kind of reddish brown that are here in the Ebonite. I think it look, would look nice in that pen. Uh, that also I think it would pair well with this uh, Nokia dorsal fin number two. You know, I just love this pen. Uh, that it uh, is one that I, I, I need to get to sooner rather than later. And that, as you see, it... There we go. It just takes a, a bit of practice to be able to line up these dorsal fins here. But this is a really an amazing pen that I kind of need to review sooner rather than later. Uh, and then also the Velvet Red would look cool in a demonstrator uh, like this Twisby Diamond 580. This one just happens to be the, the red model. Uh, I didn't ink it up because I didn't want to waste any more of the ink that I'm giving away here, but I, I think it would look nice sloshing around in not only this red one, but any other clear demonstrator as well. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to use uh, as much of the, uh, any more of this ink that I'm giving away. So speaking of the giveaway, if you would like to win this very bottle of ink, uh, please leave a note in the YouTube comments. Today is Saturday, June 10th. You have until end of day on, Ju on uh, Tuesday, uh, the 13th of June, 2017, to, ent and, uh, to enter. Uh, in regard to a, a comment topic, you know, I, I mentioned that I will always watch Shawshank Redemption if I'm flipping around and seeing that it's on. Uh, what's a, a film that you've seen over and over again that you never grow tired of? Uh, the topic is not required, just a suggestion. So, thanks again go out to Anderson Pens for providing this, uh, pro providing this ink for review and giveaway.
Uh, I do find that Mont Blanc Shakespeare is kind of a, a rich, deep red that really performs well and uh, is rather warm to the eye. So, uh, that in regard to Anderson, make sure you check out their site via the link below in the notes. Uh, they have a lot of great things there uh, beside this Mont Blanc ink that you can get there. So, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.